Somebody yeah. stole my things. Uh, <laughs> 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 she was. Stole your what? No, that was, was the cardboard doll with the poem on there. Somebody oh. took that out my pillow the day we left camp. Really? Yeah. That was a. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, you just hit the up, but no one. I mean, we can work together. Oh, okay. I don't know how to make it. Now she give me ideas. Good ideas. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, let's let's go back over here since we don't want to be male female. This is too oh, you you surprised to the yeah yeah first. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, since the last time I saw you all, I have uh, I transitioned to a new job and now I have transitioned out of that job, so I'm in between jobs right now. Um, so then. Uh, it's a really um, praying hard for uh, both girls, both on girls. Uh, mm -hmm. so they make decisions that are our best for their life. It's a good, mm -hmm. pretty good place. Uh, yeah. Twenty six and twenty. Wow. It should be twenty seven. It should be twenty seven. Wow. Oh, I mean, I you have a lot of artist interests. Are you still drumming for the I group? Am. Uh, yeah, we uh, had a had a big show uh, last last Saturday called Diversity. So we had four different dance companies that collaborated. So it worked out really well. Um, another big show coming up in, in July. Uh, if I can get my, my pennies together, uh, hopefully go to uh, Senegal in mm -hmm. December. Ooh, wow. okay. so, cause they, <laughs> the, fam the family of uh, the gentleman that I, that I drum with, they've seen me on video, so they know who I am. I'm like, well, when is he coming? <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Uh, to, well, this year, I keep going back to my doctor every four months, and my leukemia hasn't come back. Um, he said, keep on doing what you're doing. And I got a nephew that's been working with me, uh, uh, going to <laughs> at the Y, working me out. Cardiovascular and stuff, just doing stuff. It feels good. That's one thing. Uh, great grandfather, first time oh, wow. I have one. Mm -hmm. And the, the daughter, the granddaughter who had it, is the granddaughter who used to be, well, not used to be, my little favorite. Mm -hmm. And then she is with, with a baby, yeah, Brandy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because of Simba, City of Columbus also asked me to host five community forums for the police department. In the community, five in churches. Wow! And I'm going to use the same sort of stuff. Yeah. That's right. You know, I told them the chief of police, "We're not going to be on the stage. If you do, I'm going to be part of it." I said, "I want an intimate setting, not in a sanctuary, but someplace like that where people sit in a circle. I want y'all there when they come in the door to greet how you're doing, yeah. and then we just start talking." She said, "Ooh, I never thought about that." I said, "Well, I know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You didn't do this. You know. <laughs> so it's all about Simba for me." Um, I'm looking forward to camp. Um, it's a little, uh, you know, I'm just kind of concerned about what's going on with other chapters right now. Um, but other than that, I've been trying to live a more, uh, I guess I want to say more intentional life to serve God. I know I'm doing Amen. it, yes. but I, I, I need to be more intentional. And I think I may even teach a class, a Bible class. I don't know yet, but I want to do something. If nothing else, I'm guilty of not reading the Word as often as I should. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try this 21 day thing. They said yeah. that if you do stuff for 21 days, you, you'll, you'll do it. Yeah. And that's one thing I want to do. So that's me. Mm -hmm. And I feel good being here. I'm glad. You catch a lot of fish? Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> this past year was one of my best seasons. Oh, yeah? I, I tell you what, I brought in two buckets. I would say each bucket got at least 40 fish in it. Oh, wow. Frozen, right. clean. Crappies and bluegills. Okay. I gave me Jackson's son. 
and there's some downs to it. Okay. We're going to work. <laughs> and I, did, I just brought, I freeze dried, cleaned them, vacuum packed them, most of them. Oh, wow. Before I did that, I had, before I had my vacuum, I used water, mm-hmm. you know, freeze them. Uh-huh. But uh, it's crappies and bluegills. Some of them are good size and aren't. But what happens, any fisherman tell you, if you get a fish, you catch him, you're going to die, you just throw it back in the water, you keep him. Make a sandwich out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some small ones in there, but some big ones too. Okay. 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 That's okay. it. And thank you. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you right now, y'all are emotional pillows for me. When yes. I think about someone, I get such a great comfort. Mm-hmm. And they can't take that from me. Leukemia, Uncle Sam, taxes, nobody. <laughs> this is mine. That's the way I feel. And this guy over here, we went through a lot. I didn't want to play this. Well, I didn't want to play this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've been through a lot. Melissa Iker, you want to share? Um, since I've seen mm-hmm. y'all from the last reunion, let's see what has happened. Um, I have moved mm-hmm. from one apartment to another apartment. We kept raising the rent. We go from mm-hmm. 1600 to 1632 to 16. 16- to 1734. See y'all! <laughs> so I moved to another Wait, I'm sorry, how much? I was complaining. 1734. <laughs> For an apartment? Yeah, and the bad thing about it is the people under me have a four bedroom apartment bigger than mine and they're paying 350. I don't know. It's income based. If you want, if you want, $3,050? 350 dollars <laughs> For a four bedroom downstairs. And I have a three bedroom and I'm paying seventeen thirty four. I said no. Nope, That's on third and fifth? Yep. They're charging that much for in the Yes. If you okay. No, Market and CHA. So I have moved to another apartment. It's a nice place. Um, I have three grandchildren. And I was thinking about that because my daughter, Demaya, just turned nine on February fifth. My grandson, I have three ch- grandchildren, and they're three, six, nine. So Shakina, that's my oldest daughter, she has a son and he's three. Mm-hmm. My daughter Rachel has two and the son, her son is six and my granddaughter is nine. So three, six, nine. Oh, so wow. three is a part. Mm-hmm. I have three grandchildren. Um, it's a lot of work with CPS, much more. I've transitioned from being a second grade teacher to a third grade teacher. Mm-hmm. And you know, the third grade is the the grade that CPS is looking at for your <coughs> MWA scores, and right. if you pass, then you get, you know, to go to the next grade. If not, you stay back and go to summer school and all that. So it's a lot of pressure on a teacher right now. Um, oh, that's my lateness. Um, so yeah, it's a lot more work with CPS. So I'm I've been challenged a lot. CPS is Chicago, Chicago Public School. I'm a third grade teacher with Chicago Public School. And a particular school. The whole school system is a lot of pressure, but I work with this school called Burnham on 99th and Crandon, but I'm saying for CPS teachers, it's a lot of pressure Mm -hmm. on us right now because they want so much from us. How do you get to teach children when they need, Mm -hmm. this is due, this is that, this and everything is computer, you got to be computer literate, and I'm like, hey, you, can you help me do this, can you show me how to do this, can you, that's working with everybody, but it's a lot. Uh, apart from that, I um, I teach Sunday school with Shekinah on Sunday mornings, and I teach Bible study on Wednesday nights. So I have, I'm studying always, which is helping me to know more about God's Word. And when you talked about on the circle this morning about having me time or spending time with me, it's a wonderful feeling. Yes. It's a beautiful feeling just learning to love me and not trying to love throw my love out there and get hurt. Mm. I'd rather keep the love and focus on God. So mm. praying and doing my journals and reading and studying and and loving scandal and empire <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and how to get away with murder. I gotta watch Empire. Oh girl, it's good. It's, <laughs> good. it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. The but reality movies? No, no, no. It's uh, oh, Taraji. Yeah, that's all right. Taraji it's a series. Yeah, it's like a series. Yeah, it's a series. But it's good. It's good. I look forward to watching those. So anyway, apart from that, everything else is good. My children are healthy. I'm healthy. Um, I'm trying to eat right. I'm trying to live right. Um, 
I went to the doctor uh, a couple months ago, and they were like, your, sh your uh, cholesterol is high, so watch what you eat. So uh, we looked it up online, and I've, Shakina and I found a lot of things that you could eliminate from your diet that causes cancer, canned tomatoes, raisins, and everything sweet, Raisin. candies, yeah, everything too sweet because the, the doctor was saying, cancer loves sweets. Mm -hmm. So all the cookies yeah. and candies and mm -hmm. pies and stuff, try mm -hmm. to eliminate that. Even the juices, watch the juices you drink, and they have monosodium. Uh, Blue tomato. Yeah, that's the, the, the uh, potato chips in the bag and microwave popcorn. They got a whole list. So I typed all of that and passed it out to the dance ministry. Yeah. So uh, so trying to eat right and live right. My son is now 24, and he is at Columbia College downtown. He's uh, into music productions, and he's doing really good. I'm really proud of him. He's staying out of trouble. He's doing good. Uh, he works at the Water Tower at a, a red little restaurant down there, and he goes to school, so he's doing really good. I'm proud of him. And my daughter, Becky, that's the last daughter. She works downtown on Oak Street. She's doing good, too. My daughter, Rachel, she's 29. She's like, I can't believe I'm 29. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's going to be 30 on September 27th. So... And my okay. daughter, three da three daughters and a son. Okay. So my daughters are doing really good. In fact, everybody's doing well. I'm just thankful. Shakina works with high. She and I work together at a, a high school teaching high school girls dance. Wow. Girls and boys, we teach them African dance, drum, singing, proverbs. You know, the whole Simba Simpson thing experience in the high school. So we're doing pretty good with that. And it's all good. That's mm. all. That's all. Good. Thank you. Brother Hatem. Mm. Well, since the last reunion, was that the last reunion? Yeah. Yes. The cab. The cab, okay. The cab. <coughs> well, no. Yeah, yeah, I was out there running. Uh -huh. <coughs> well, I mean, everything was going good. Uh, I'm still working at Millennium Community School. Um, it's changing Millennium School. You're not just working there. What's that? It's changing it. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, actually, because uh, the, the blessing about that school is mm -hmm. that one of the persons that was there at the beginning right. that's, that was on the board is the superintendent now. So he basically brought me on. I'm the dean of students. So, I mean, I, I, I get love from the kids every day. Uh, it's nothing like going to work and being able to really do something that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And each year, you know, I'm... Uh, I, I feel more and more blessed because I'm learning a lot as far as dealing with some of the parents and seeing where a lot of the issues for our children come from. Um, I learn more about the children. Um, I'm looking forward to, well, I'm really happy that I'm able to participate with my, my youngest son's education because he's been at Millennium since he was in kindergarten. I've been working there since he's been in, in first grade. So he's going to fourth now. Um, Next year, well, this summer, um, my second, my second youngest daughter is going to start there, so I'll be here to watch her. Um, uh, I mean, everything, everything is good. I mean, I, I have no complaints. I haven't got a new car. I haven't moved to a new apartment. <laughs> or, you know, but I'm working on. You know, and all that, all that's gonna come in time. Um, I've been able to. I had time to really focus on um, my podcast. Last year, I was trying to do um, at least five a week. This year, I settled on doing three rather than trying to drive myself crazy and, and do all those podcasts. I just broke it down to maybe here's three that I do a week. Um, I've been the, the listeners been increasing. I've been writing a little bit more. I'm almost done with another book. Oh, um, wonderful! And you know, I mean. I'm just growing. I'm enjoying myself. Yes. I'm enjoying myself when I'm in a position where I, I might not be able to help people financially, but in other ways I can help people because, right. you know, a lot of times we think money solves problems, but yes. actually it's not money. It's the resources right. and the ability to, to plug people in yes. in certain places that, that really, that, I mean, when it, when it really counts. So yes. I'm able to yes. do that. So anyway, I, I called him. 
And say, guess what? I call prank on call them children's service because y'all got some naked babies over there. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, they just yeah. well, okay. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Robert, you want to share? <clears throat> well, this is my first reunion, <laughs> but uh, since camp <clears throat> the last year, I've uh, got a job. I just lost a job, but it's okay because I think God is working on me now to let me have more time to do what I need to do. <laughs> well, I had a, I didn't have a heart attack. Yes, I did. I've had another heart attack since the last camp. Now, everything is looking better for me. I had a little relapse a couple of months ago. Well, about a month ago. Well, I got a little sick, but uh, he told me I'm okay, that everything is just to take my, my medicine more, and I'd be okay. So I, I'm listening to him on that, and I'm doing a lot better. I had two more grandkids. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Oh yes, I'm up to 17 now. And Woo. So why your wife put her head down and start shaking? <laughs> 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 uh, what else? Uh, I've had a daughter that joined the church, and that just yeah. that's yeah. A, he joined that. I'm glad, mom. Glad, mom. I can't wait to hear your story. <laughs> She don't count as high as I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Um, yeah, and that that just made my it, it made me so happy. I had a a daughter that moved to Texas that's doing okay, doing uh -huh. real good. She came to visit us at the church not too long uh, last yes. week, and yes. awesome. that was a blessing there. Anytime I get to see them kids, it just seems like it rejuvenates and makes me be feel. Uh, so much younger and better, mm -hmm. and don't know when they, if they come to the church, it makes me feel even more better. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, yeah. Uh, other than that, everything's been about the same. I know this year I have enough time now to go to camp because I'm not planning on going back to work until after camp. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and well, I know that my you, health is wife okay. Right, right. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to miss it this year. I missed it last year, and I. I know Mike got tired of me trying to call him. <laughs> I don't have a phone and all. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, everything's been good. I've been blessed. Amen. Yeah. Rob, are you doing everything the doctor tells you to do? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> That's all I want to know. I'm going to be honest about that. No, I'm kind of. I was kind of a little hard here. You still eating yeah. his potato chips? Uh oh. Okay. Wait a minute. Stay with this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Downstairs. Yeah. Back, Life. Life. You're too low. Well, he like you say, he got seventeen. I don't count all of them. I, you know, I I love them all, but I. <laughs> Last year, man. I'm through paying on my plan for my car. Uh -oh. Oh. 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 About nothing. Nice. Uh, How you did that? Talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's right. That is a book. Come on, come on. <laughs> They're paying on. How long? How long did you have it for? Uh, Five years. Oh, okay. Okay. That's a good thing. Um. <laughs> uh, Still in my job. It'll be 13 years mm. at Northwestern Hospital. Um, I feel great. Amen. Nothing new besides that. You did. You joined the dance company. You know, uh, I joined the dance oh, for a while. Good. But right. you know, other reasons had to step back. Um, for one, job because I do a lot of OT. Then I got the pinched nerve in my neck that comes and goes. 
She had the stuff on her desk, so she threw the stuff off her desk. So the teacher, well, you don't say nothing when Maya and them do it. And this is the way she talks to the teacher. So the lady called me, and I go up there. I'm like, Kalia, you talk to her like that? What? So she crying and crying. Yeah, but, uh, and I say, Kalia, you know you don't supposed to talk to no adult in that type of tone. It wasn't what she was saying. It was the uh, way she was saying it, how loud her voice was in the way she took her stuff and threw it on the, the floor. So the teacher wanted to write it up, but she know the kind of parent I am. She didn't write up. She called me up there. I talked to Kalia. Kalia went back. I made her write her apology letter, and I also made her write um, some agreements that she was going to keep with the teacher, so she had to sign it. She gave it to the teacher. The teacher signed off on it. And the next quarter, she just changed. She did like a whole 360. The teacher was like, wow, what did you do to her? And I wanted to tell her I didn't whoop her, but I wanted to. <laughs> I didn't. When she, came, when she got out of school that day, I didn't let her come home to me. I let her go to her godmother's house. We called her godmother the jail. I mean, through she to her godmother's son and her godmother's portion. But we called that the jail. So I didn't let her come home to me. I let her go to her godmother's house. So when I came to pick up at like 6 that night, I'm, I'm like, well, she what's Kalia at? She's like downstairs in the basement. I'm like, what is she down? I think she's letting her down. I said, why are you letting her? She's like, she ain't watching no TV. She's standing up in the corner holding three books. So she had her stand up in the corner for two hours holding three books. So that was her punishment. So she didn't get it, and then I took her home. <laughs> we took her home for a long, long time. Whole quarter. Yeah, long time. Years. Then we didn't get like three, four months. So. Yeah. We took the phone from her, we stripped her from that, and she bought her grade up, and she also, on top of that, she had a D, mm -hmm. too, on her report card. Mm -hmm. So she brought the D up to an A+, plus, the next question. A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Yes, yeah, she Why did. my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she brought her to an A+, plus. she did. I was, I was wow. like, wow. And yeah. she, she changed her behavior. She stopped being a social bunny, because that's her problem. She's too much into social instead of being into what she's supposed to be on. And that's just Kalia. So she Oprah. can talk. Yeah, it's so hard. It's just, it's like, yes. Oprah did and the same thing. Same thing with Ryan and they, all she do is, care, all she want to talk about is, is Baba, Baba, Baba going to be there? The same thing she said, is, is he going to be there? I say, yes. Love no, Baba. So she's a fan of Baba as well. And her Macomba Lolita. I done heard about her all week too. Is <laughs> <laughs> Mac Macomba Lolita where she at? She gonna be there? I said, Kalia, I'm not calling her. She's going to be there. Oh, I just hope I be in her. I just hope I be with her. I said, okay. So, yeah. No. Get delayed. <laughs> and Goodies. <laughs> and I got their bags packed. Ah! And she, knew it. she already knew what she like. Cause I, I, I know she got something. I said, you know she got something. Oh, they all under the table. I'm like, okay, so yeah. And just this month, January, I took um, a break in January. Let me talk about that. I took a break because um, I felt I needed some time for myself. Usually, Corrine is not the kind of person that takes time for herself and be concerned with herself. I'm always worried about other people and trying to do stuff for other people. So, um, the month of January, I took some time off and just focused on myself. Yeah, and it was fun. On Unlikely, I got a few rude phone calls. I ain't gonna say no names. <laughs> but Mike, I did. But I did have a good break. <laughs> 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 no, I love my L's. I'm just playing. You ought to think about your daughter. You know, a lot of times kids say, well, I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. Yes, I'm just mm -hmm. explaining. Okay. Yeah. But everything else is good. I'm struggling in math. That's another thing I'm struggling. This <clears> 18 <throat> statistics is driving me nuts. So that's why I'm looking probably sad a little bit, probably dazed off, and I'm. I had a couple people say, "You're not. You okay? You're not." So it's not nobody else. It's just that I'm worried about my midtime. Yeah, Elder Shed gonna tutor me. I'm gonna say, hey, there you go, there you go. He's good. So Elder Shed is gonna tutor me, and I hope I can. You know what, Elder Shed. He's a mathematician. Oh, he can do more math. Mother do a peanut. Well, can really? I get your number before you leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we have to share that. Maybe I can call you on the phone. Maybe we can do the Skype. Then you can show, I'll show you the part. Cause I, it's the graphing, too, that's, that's bothering me. Okay. The graphing. So, yeah. But other than that, my English, everything else, I'm doing phenomenally. I think I got a 3.5. But if I don't get this math class passed with a B, that cannot be that. So, yeah.
something mm-hmm. I would go to the computer the tutoring lab mm-hmm. and they had a lot of Africans there yeah but and I can't understand what I'm saying he, honey I, I came out with a 4.0 and all of a sudden mommy you got a 4.0 mm-hmm. well tutors <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Ah, they have tutors yeah. 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 all right cool man. Mike you wanna hey everybody uh eventful year for me since uh last year mm-hmm. uh, Mark version. <laughs> uh, Health wise, a couple weeks ago, I thought I had a heart attack, shoveling snow, uh, along with my iron mic theme or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> uh, my device went off, uh, false negative or whatever, mm-hmm. but it went through the process like I was having a heart attack and shocked me. Mm. And oh. Clenching of the teeth, uh, the clear, the electrical charge coming over here, going up, boom. I mean, it was unbelievable. So, but it was a false. The machine rather go off in error than right. not go off and, and right. I needed it. So I thank God that that's why I went to the doctor stubbornly uh, a couple of days later instead of immediately going to the hospital mm-hmm. and waited. And I went and got chastised. And, but anyway, that's over with. So I'm doing fine there. Uh, right now, I'm struggling with my diabetes. They took me off of the pills I was taking. I took like four or five different pills for six, seven years and everything. Things fine. They take me off of that, put me on the insulin now. The shot? Yeah, I hate needles. I hate the shot. I'm sticking myself everywhere trying to. Mm-hmm. This is new and uh, it's, it's gradually going down where I should be because one day I tried to take my sugar and it was off the chart. It wouldn't even register. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like, Dude, you need to get to the hospital, you know, because it's like over 600. Mm-hmm. And wow. you know, you're going to diabetic shock, diabetic coma, mm-hmm. something like that. So, But I'm dealing with that right now and dealing with the. Uh, I don't work anymore. I lost my job with my health and all that, so I have to deal with Medicaid, and Medicaid only pays for certain things, right. mm-hmm. and that's frustrating. That, that pisses me off, but I have to deal with that. So uh, it's like they feel like I chose this. I've got to keep it. My, dude, I didn't choose this. I, diabetes chose me, mm-hmm. so I'm dealing with the best way I can. Uh, that's health. Spiritual, I'm a much better person than I was last year. I've uh, gotten more involved with the church, with the deacons, they have us uh, I'm actually assisting these two ladies teach their Sunday school class and it is awesome it is off the chain, I never saw Mike doing that and just the experience with the kids and they all have teaching backgrounds so I'm, I'm trying to cheat off of them, how are they getting the kids to interact with them, it's so natural to them and that amazes me and the kid, I'm in there like I'm going by the biblical and da da and they're like looking at me like but they can do it in this so, you know, and I like that, and I'm, I'm, I'm striving to get there, but uh, I'm learning, I'm learning from them. Uh-huh. Uh, family-wise, uh, I don't know if I should thank Simba or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> so apparently when I left Simba, oh. my wife got impregnated. <laughs> something I'm struggling with because uh, my wife works during the day 
the kids are in school and I have a lot of downtime mm -hmm. and that's not good. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't time is the devil's playground. So I try to stay active and stay busy, uh, doing little side jobs. I come out to the church at least twice a week, clean, do maintenance and do things like that. It, it helps me deal with it. But uh, it's been, I've had, it's, it's just been something. I'll say that the last year, but spiritually that's my most, uh, I'm happy with that part. Because God has taken me to another plane, I believe, uh, preparing me for things and dealing with life. And uh, it's, it's a blessing. It's all a blessing. I have no complaints. No complaints. My, and I, uh, my granddaughter, she's 16, Imani, she had a uh, defibrillator. Mm -hmm. And it goes off every now and then, too. We almost lost her. Had me for the coach. We knew CPR. Hmm? She's 21. She's 21? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> 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 basketball player. Wow. And went down the court, fell out. And Duke could have the coach, knew exactly what to do. Because right, she right. actually died. Wow. And, she got up. and it goes off every now and then. My the first girl. time, and this is my second one. The first one I had for eight years, and nobody never knew. I worked, carried refrigerators up to the third floor, stoves oh, no. on my back, carried up to the third floor, no problem. And I never told my job about it, but they were paying oh. me so well. But. In the long run, I paid for it. And now the new one I got is underneath my arm. It's not like the last one. It actually was inside my heart. And so my heart grew around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the battery, it was a recall on it, like a car. And mm -hmm. also, uh, time to change the battery. So they said, let's do two for one. We'll take it out, put a brand new one in. But as they were taking it out, my body had grown around it. Mm -hmm. And they ripped a hole in my heart. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the size of a golf ball. Didn't know what happened. I died twice. 15 minutes, brought me my, back. My, my. I died for five minutes, brought me back, got me to the emergency room, opened me up, operating room, and found out, oh, we put a hole in the car. Oh, my goodness. And um, the frustrating part is I can't sue them because there was a 1% chance that would happen. Oh, man. From the uh, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And that, so there's a 1% chance. And I'm, man, it will never happen to me, and it happened. That's frustrating, man. When you took away my livelihood, I can't work. I can't do what I like doing. And, uh, and I mean, you signed something that says you can't sue, or they? Uh, I mean, because just well, I tried with a lawyer, and we went through all the medical experts and right. expert opinions. We went to the guy who invented the pacemaker, invented the way to remove it, invented the way to install it, and he wouldn't even agree. And they probably went to two other medical experts, and they wouldn't. We could have got one person to side with us. You know, but even the maker or manufacturer, he couldn't. So there was it's like fighting uphill battles. And there was a one percent chance in there that, that could happen. So that's a big hole, look. Yeah, everything happens for a reason though. Thank God I'm here talking to you guys. I'm alive, Man. I'm growing, I'm not in a wheelchair, a vegetable. Man. You fertile? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
and the complaint to DCFS was I grabbed the kid. So I said, did I hit him or did I grab him? Which one did I do? <laughs> it stressed me out because I had all this stuff going on. Um, December 9th, I spoke with the DCF representative. He read the law to me because he knew I didn't do it. Um, and uh, December 9th at 11.09, I went into Loyola University room, stressed out because of the cell crisis, and I didn't come out until December 27th. Oh. Um, I have not been back to work because um, they put a midline in my arm, which caused a blood clot. So now I'm on blood thinners. The blood clot caused some damage to my back, so I had to have uh, physical therapy for my back. Because I'm overcompensating for the left side, I've messed up my right arm. So now I'm having physical therapy for my right arm, and then I have to have physical therapy for my knees, and I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to work because I need all of these things to get down on the floor and talk to my baby. Mm -hmm. So it's been a challenge, but I'm still here. Um, like I said, I'm not in a wheelchair, you know. Um, my testimony has always been, I thank God that I have activity in my limbs because I know how it is sometimes not to be able to have that. Um, and so, um, but I'm very, very grateful. Mm -hmm. I had, I did get extremely great blessing. I think I have the best one in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she bought a car in April because she wanted to learn how to drive. I taught her how to drive. Now she drives herself to work because I was driving her from, to work from April to August. She got a driver's license in August. First week of August, the third week of August, she was driving herself to work. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, she never driven before? No. Wow. Mm -hmm. That you um, know. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, on Monday, she took me to buy me a car. Oh, wow. Snap my Achilles tendon out at uh, oh, <laughs> out at, uh I, he don't blame the reunion. Cal, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that started a progressive uh, <laughs> wow. operations on my body. If I take out my clothes, I look like Frankenstein with that makes half they been cutting over the back. <laughs> they, you know, um, <laughs> God has been good. Uh, I've had, I've been tossed from center to circumference in this uh, in this last year. Um, seeing people that I love injured and I saw God wrap his arm around them. Um, my uh, granddaughter, she uh, plays basketball for a high school in the suburbs of Chicago and she uh, snapped her ACL uh, in the middle of a game so she's, you know, she was out for wow. a season but that's good. Uh, God is still making us strong. Um, 
recently, uh, my oldest son was in Atlanta uh, for a Rough Rock Riders convention, and uh, you know, rental car slid into a, a, a tree, uh, broke his hip, and uh, fractured four four his ribs. Um, and that's why I'm so glad that God was in the midst, mm -hmm. because what could have happened didn't happen. Uh, I find uh, so much joy in not the fact that he was, was hurt, but I kind of got me, me a daughter-in-law. Uh, the young lady that he's married to, mm -hmm. I never liked her. <laughs> and they've been married, you know, 10 years. But when this happened to him, uh, she was on it. Mm -hmm. yes. And she yes. went down there and we started communicating and we built a rela relationship out of the misery of my son, which, wow. you know, he moves in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When I'm, you know, at my apex of my uh, uh, circumference, you know, I start to lose faith and things start to happen, and then God just pulls me back into the center. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when he pulls me back to the center, I feel that joy, and I can see the good in everything that he, that he does. Mm -hmm. you know? And is, you know, I'm just thankful for what, what could have happened didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I am, uh, uh, my job for, I've been on the same job for 32 years, mm -hmm. uh, and I, it's a wonder how people that come in uh, that I'm having problems with, God takes care of them for me. <laughs> <laughs> and tried to do things the right way and God kind of he's behind it and he, he makes things Amen. makes things happen that I never could have you know resolved um, uh, family is good uh, I'm good I don't worry about my pains anymore because at a certain age you're supposed to have some, yeah. some, some type of age but <laughs> But I do think that, that uh, my family is coming uh, closer together uh, and bonding now. Mm -hmm. So that's wow. it. Mm -hmm. that's right. uh, the theme for uh, this year's uh, 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 reunion is, is it's real in these streets. It's real in these streets. And I kind of want to ask a question. How many of us have ever been stopped by the police? Oh, Chicago's fine. Not Chicago, but... And, and, and um, as adults, we've made our mistakes in dealing with the police, uh, but how do we give the proper information to our kids about how to handle the police if they ever stop? Because now they have become not our servers and protectors, but more or less our, 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 our enemies mm -hmm. in, in the streets. And it's uh, because a lot of the, the, uh, the white policemen, the younger white policemen, are scared of young black boys mm -hmm. and, and young black women. I seen something on the street uh, yesterday where these, these girls just stopped traffic in the middle of uh, Jackson and Cicero and were battling. I mean, they were <laughs> kicking each other out of cars and... Wait, and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one police car showed up and this one policeman couldn't handle him and he called like eight of his different squad cars and they got out with their sticks and they were starting to whoop some mud around there. But how many of us know how to deal with uh, uh, police issues like when we stopped? You know, what information do we have to give? Uh, what information that uh, uh, we should keep our mouths shut about. And so I went, uh, I had some old literature in my, uh, in my files about from the ACLU, the uh, American Civil Liberties Union, on what to do when you stop by the, the police. American Civil Liberties Union is a, a group of lawyers that take uh, uh, landmark cases and process them through the courts where uh, human 
um, um, human rights have been uh, uh, violated. Mm -hmm. And one of those uh, uh, landmark cases was uh, Miranda versus the uh, uh, Arizona. And that's where we get the, uh, our Miranda rights from. Mm -hmm. And in the Miranda rights, it says you're supposed to keep quiet and you know, you have the right to remain silent. Right, Most right. of us who had any, uh, watch CSI or right. any television program about police and, and criminals have heard the Miranda Act and dealt with the waiver that's at, at the bottom of that Miranda Act, which says if you want to give up these rights, you know, you have the right to do so. Mm -hmm. But I have a, um, and I thought it would be interesting since we have the, the think tank of Simba and Simpson here to create a, a, a presentation for the kids on what they can, should do and what they shouldn't do mm -hmm. when stopped by the police. Mm -hmm. And they have a, um, a number of, um, okay, for instance, um, to be polite, and respectful, never bad mouth the police officer. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what can happen if they're not polite and respectable. And say break up in, and say groups of threes, and each group will get like uh, this group will get one of the uh, uh, the rules that we should follow, and then come up with something that we can make a presentation to the kids. There are actually uh, 20 of them. Uh, stay in control of your words, body language, and emotions. Uh, don't get into an argument with the police. Uh, remember, anything you say can be used against you. Keep your hands where the police can see them. Don't run, don't touch any police officer. Don't resist even if you believe you are innocent. Don't complain on the scene or tell the police that you they, they are wrong or that they're going that or that you're going to file a complaint. <laughs> Don't make a statement regarding the incident. <clears throat> Ask for a lawyer immediately upon arrest. Remember the officer's badge number and patrol car number. Write down everything immediately after the incident. Try to find witnesses and their names and phone numbers. If you are injured, take photographs of the injuries as soon as possible. Make sure to seek medical attention. If you feel your rights have been violated, file a written complaint with the Police Department's Internal Affairs, Affairs Division or Civilian Complaint Board. So after hearing all of those uh, uh, options, what can we come up with to tell our children what, what to do? Because these things just might save their lives out there in the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, we, it. I think we should um, do a interact, do a skit, skit yeah, right. Right. where how, how to do it the wrong way and what happens when you right. do it the wrong way yeah. and then how to do it the right way and what could possibly happen if you do it the right way mm -hmm. using all of those scenarios. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And each group, how many people do we have here? 12? Three, six, nine, 12. 12. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we want to mix up the groups and give each group uh, three of the uh, uh, three of the uh, uh, don'ts when in dealing with the police. Okay, let's uh, I want to do one, two, three. Why don't you have it? One, two, three, one, ten, and one together, choose the answers. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I don't know. Well, I know. Yeah. You, you the doc. Go ahead. You got 30 minutes. Uh, 30 minutes? Total. 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 I didn't really hear a lot about because I told you we do, I do many rights work. Mm -hmm. And um it didn't talk to me about consent to a search, so I do think you should add you don't have to consent to a search. 
Well, you should never come to this place, actually. He talked about remaining silent, um, asking the cops, am I free to go? And... What am I being stopped for? No. If they ever stop you for a DUI uh, and, and you don't consent to the test, mm -hmm. they can suspend your license. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if it's you, at your discretion. If you, the test is different, but mm -hmm. you don't have to consent to a search of your person or your They can vehicle. do a pat down. They can your, do a pat, pat down. down. But They're not, not a, supposed to go inside of anything. Not to go inside of anything. You can, uh, if they stop you in your car, and ask for permission to search your car. You don't have to give them permission to search your car, but it immediately makes you suspect. Yes. And, you know, what are your rights there? It does, and we tell people that it, just because it makes you suspicious to the police, the police is not the one who judge whether or not you are su suspicious <clears throat> or not. But they're gonna try to intimidate you to make you feel like that. Mm. All you have to yes. do is invoke your rights. I do not consent to a search. They may still search you because that's what police do. They may violate your rights. When you come before the judge, you tell the judge that I didn't consent to a search. Yeah, but well, I think that's a part. But they come, that, come. That, that would be the, the end part of how we present to them. Because you got to give them room to, to question. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. do I do? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we present the basics of what he's talking about, and then when they say, well, what if they ask, what if they try to search, and then that, I think that would be the time to, because uh, we don't want to give them so much information that it overwhelms them, Right. Uh, but, but they get the, they get the <coughs> basic point of what to do at the basic mm -hmm. stop. Since we only, how, how long we got? 30 minutes. Well, we got 30 minutes, 30 minutes. we need to pick yeah. the most, whichever the one we long. vote is the most pertinent, because we're not going to be able to develop on three of them, mm -hmm. if we, even if we separate in the groups. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the most important one is the in, in how do you deal with the initial contact? Because it's like uh, arguing and disrespecting yeah. the police. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that opens the floodgate because yeah, I have had yeah. friends that's been pulled over. I got a brother by the name of Taiwan. I have been with Taiwan in the car three times and he's been speeding. Mm -hmm. And the police will pull him over and just... His presentation. Right. Yes. Right. We had the police go. I mean, we in we in the backwoods. You have a good day, sir. I'm like, what? How you do that? I mean, he started off. How you doing? He got his hands up, proper, and, and it's all in how he great yeah. greeted the police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They so they tell him have a good day, sir. They tell him have a good day. We're gonna let you. You, you have a warning. Wow. Slow down. I mean, twice coming December. Mm -hmm. Go about your business. We got to talk one time. We got oh, and, and the way we uh, with locks in down south, and we got off with a warning just in how we dealt with the police officer. Wow. That old man with him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't argue with you police, dog. Uh, no, I already yeah. know. Can't win. Okay. Right. I mean, you know why? Why have a battle where you know you can't win? Let me ask this question real quick. I don't know if we got, if we got lots of coming. This is interesting to me. If you let's say really, these kids smoke marijuana, mm -hmm. all right? You smoke in your car. The police stop. Yes. You try to roll the window down. He's yeah. looking at this. Now, they can search your car if they suspect you yes. have drugs in it. That's probable mm -hmm. cause. Okay. I mean, kids don't know that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I was just going to comment on what she was saying, that it doesn't matter even if you invoke your rights. But if they have anything that, that gives them probable cause to think something, they have the right to search that vehicle. And they can create things too, can they? Yeah. The stuff they no, if they have a warrant, they have a right. They can say yeah. probable cause, you can still invoke your right not to consent. They might still search, but you can say, I do not consent to a search. But you don't have to because argue. Yeah. You, don't have you don't have to, to argue with her because it's like, look, what right. she's saying is you invoke your right. Mm -hmm. So now in my statement, afterwards, because on there they say write down everything that happened. Yes. They go through your car. You step out your car. You say, I don't give you consent to search my car. We're going to search your car anyway. Cool. You don't have to argue, you see, right. because it's all in the presentation. Mm -hmm. Boom, right. I'm writing it down. I'm not saying I'm going to file a report. All right, cool. I'm going to let you forget about me, but then when, when my stuff come across your desk, you're going to have to, you're going to have to be, you're going to be able to be held accountable because I have recorded and I have sent to your station the fact that I told you I didn't give you consent to search my car. Okay, you don't actually put. Go ahead. You write it down. Mm -hmm. the police officer. No, not why the police. No. Oh, okay. No. So, right. 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 They memorize their badge numbers. But most of us got bad memories. They write it down. Yeah. 
All we got to do, because look, you right. tell them the badge number, you don't got to worry about the badge number. All you got to do is remember the neighborhood and the time yeah, and the number beat. on the back of the car. Yeah. They'll track down who the police yes. officers are because those badge numbers right. might be too long. But I can remember car 15 at 12 noon. Mm-hmm. On, 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 on Right. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? So now I could, I could narrow it down. And I could maintain being polite no matter how much of, excuse my language, yeah. how much of an asshole this, this police officer is, act, is acting. Because a lot of times by our kids mm-hmm. responding, yeah. because they, you, they bait our kids, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. yeah. they already know. You know, we already suffer from ego issues. So now you're going to come and you're going to try to punk me? Right. You know what I'm saying? And we got to, we got to distinguish mm-hmm. and teach our kids to distinguish the difference between a trap and somebody really trying to punk you. Yeah. I'm trying to, I, I can't really punk you if I have power over you. You understand what I'm saying? It's already established. Right. You know what I'm saying? So all I got to do is bait you, and you get you start arguing with me, and the argument and escalate to a point to where either I can you give you some arrest. time or I can kill you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think that's extremely relevant, not just in relating to the police, but just in relating to anybody. Right, yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. That's right. Respond. Just, yeah, just how you respond, how you can uh, minimize any type of confusion, any type right. of uh, conflict, conflict or confrontation, yeah. just in how you right. don't get right. provoked. Right. Yeah. Let me tell y'all this. Whatever it is, it's trying to trying to trap I think that's a really No matter what skip we come up with, let's make right. sure you got time to ask yeah. questions. Those yeah. Okay. They may ask questions yeah. that we haven't thought of. Oh, no, I can see y'all there. Now, this is one of the things that I saw when when dealing with. When dealing with not just police officers, but people in general. One of the things my grandparents always taught me was I used to get in trouble for not speaking. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, no, I mean, a lot of us, a lot of us just would take it for granted the, uh, the power of asking somebody how you doing today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. How you doing today? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 and I done seen the work. I seen the work with him in Alabama. I seen the work with Taiwan. I see. I, I fell asleep in the car, ran the light. The police pulled me over. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. Blah blah blah. You you you, you, you drove. Sir. I fell asleep. And you been drinking? Nah, I just fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? He looked at the car. He looked in. You know what I'm saying? Oh, all right, cool. You have a morning. Be safe. Then he ain't your name or nothing. Yeah, I don't, no, see, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I don't have nothing to prove. I don't got to argue with you. I ain't, right. why you pulling me over? My whole attitude is like, who, you doing your job. I understand. I got a job too. I got to suspend kids and parents <laughs> come in mad at me because I got to suspend them. I understand. You know what I'm saying? But, I'm but sorry. In, in light of what's going on around our country mm-hmm. with the police uh, uh, being the, 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 Killers of our children. Mm-hmm. Our children have to have a, a, a weapon that they can use without promoting this. Not saying that a Trayvon Martin issue is not going to happen, you know. But the basic knowledge of how to deal with the police, the basic knowledge, you know, you if if you're not going to stand out there in the street and argue with the police mm-hmm. at two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and it's just you and him, <laughs> even though you think you did the right thing. Right. You know, you are putting yourself in danger in that situation. Yes, they right. pick you up, pick you up for curfew. Where you live, where you going? Near your business. You, you know, I'm, 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 I'm you know, you, you punking me. You know, <laughs> right. You dead man can't talk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Yep. Your word against his. I was just gonna say that you already set the scenario. Curfew, two a.m. Another one, um, I was thinking that, uh, and my son experienced that one too, that the, the child could be walking down the street, a kid could be walking, and then they just pull up and say, you fit the description, or you fit the whatever, right, and, right. And, and they want to pull, you know, search you, and you know, how do you deal with a situation like that? With, That's a good situation. With my son, he was coming from work, he has his Kennedy, his book bag from Kennedy King. He goes to school. He was coming from school, but he got to go to work. So he's coming home. He get off on 38th and Indiana, wherever the Green Line stopped him, and he's walking to Vincent. They just pull up two Hispanic mm-hmm. cops, just pull up on him and say, you fit the description because he got dreadlocks. And he tells me, he, t- you know, my son is, he's going to argue and say something, but he tells them, 
Man, you see my book bag on my back? I'm coming from school. I got hamburger, my name on my job on my uh, you gonna stop me and tell me I fit the description. Why don't you go down to the next block? They gang banging on the other corner and you and they, they didn't mess with him and they drove off. But sometimes they will not do that. Yeah. Because he says, Man, I got my book bag, I I you know why they might plant something on him and say, You fit the description, you know, we we caught you with a gun or something. Well, they may so, just say you just being belligerent, right. yeah. and right. that will cause them to take action so, against you being right. belligerent. I think that we ought to teach our kids a universal truth. Mm -hmm. Always keep your eye over your E. If they didn't think about what that right. means, yep. mm -hmm. always keep the index over emotion. Yes. You can always be emotional, mm -hmm. but if you put your E over your eye, yes. then you're going to have problems. Yeah, that's, that's, it. That's, that's where we're life, yes. period. Yes. So we can drive on that point. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. What to say? You got no one to hold up, no one to fold up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Lose the battle, win the war, yeah. all these kind of things. They got, we got to instill in them. And uh, I think it's important to let them know. Y'all know that racism is still alive. Yes. yes. They can't oh, talk they about have it. To know that. So yes. please come back home and say, humble yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have to. Catch more bees and honey. Yes. The 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 the. That don't mean, you know, that this racial profiling don't it's still exist. Right. My yeah. daughter did not handle her situation well. She was trying to protect somebody else, and the bus driver threw something to her. She threw it back. Mm. The, bu the bus driver called the police. She told the police if they touched her, she was going to stab her with her pen. It was it was crazy. Um, and she they were supposed to take her to just a regular overnight lockup. They put her in prison. I had to get out my because bed and drive she because, because, because of her attitude. The attitude. So, that's right, a good thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, you know, you can, you can, you can to determine, your attitude will determine, your, your attitude will determine your, your attitude. attitude. So it's going to yeah. matter, you know, it's going to, uh, I mean, I think it all, I think the, but it needs to be different scenarios. And I think because we do have a lot of kids getting ready to graduate and go away to college, that's something right. that they need to know. Um, yeah, your mom and daddy ain't down there with you. Right. Yeah, well, I, I, I've experienced where, where police have stopped me at night. And I tell my sons the same thing. If, they, if you ever stopped at night, turn on your dome light in your car, roll down your windows, keep your hands on the wheel, and mm -hmm. talk to the officer like that. Don't go looking mm -hmm. for your license right. and your insurance and, and all in the car. Then you they don't want you to come to like yeah, 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 yeah. So, or if they don't have a weapon, we as adults need to know how to handle it. Got that right. 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 Yeah. right. You have to wait till they ask you for it. Right. Coming up in the South yeah. Side the way I did, I been stopped probably more than a lot of y'all have been stopped. And just walking down the street and just with the guys that I had, I used to hang out with. Guys. We were riding, walking around five and six, we were riding in cars five and six. And they were intimidated by that. Then if you can, you have to just accept that there are prejudiced guys out there. There's going to be some prejudice. Yeah, they have all kinds of gonna, And no matter what you say to right. them, uh, how polite you talk to them, they're going to do just what brother says and bait you. They're going to say something to you to try to take you off your square. You just can't, can't let them do that to you. Especially you have, to, you have to maintain right. yourself, maintain your temper, and just be polite. That's, right. that's what I try to tell everybody. Just... Try to talk to them like you have some some type of uh, sense of pride about yourself, but you have some intelligence about yourself also. Uh -huh. So what's the accountability accountability piece that we need to lead with them? As far as as for the police accountability or no, for, for them? them. For because them. we know that we know that the police have to be held accountable. That's because of the law. How, what what is their accountability? Their accountability mm -hmm. should be what like what Bible says. They need to be humble. Mm -hmm. When they go into the situation, catch more bees with honey than vinegar. Like I said, when they got when Kendall's mm -hmm. shoes was cooking, instantly one boy was circling around the locker room and he was like, "If anybody's shoes come on missing, don't tell the coach, tell the principal." And Kendall didn't think anything. He goes and says, "Change clothes, get ready to practice." And he's sitting on the sideline, and the same boy comes to him and asks him, "What size shoe you wear?" Kendall didn't think nothing. He told him a ten. Playing, go downstairs, change. Standing in front of the locker, putting on his clothes. They throw him cones, pushed him out the way. Seconds, took his shoes. Kendall, get ready to put on his shoes. He looked.
love him, feel the shoes, and sleep. He told me, he said, he shed his locks. He said, I shed my lock on my, put my lock on, and walked up to him and told him to go. He didn't get mad. He didn't react. He didn't holler or get to fight. Right. Like, These are some thing. $250 shoes. He didn't try to fight. He went, he, because I teach him that. Me and my husband, we, that's how we raised him. Don't, don't do that. Don't argue, fight, or try to do that. No, he persisted. He went and got the coat, 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 my shoes, got looking. Coach came downstairs and checked all the locks. But the way he handled it, he handled it in a humble way. He did not go acting crazy. Right. So, and, and a lot of our kids think by acting crazy. I mean, because it's like, yeah. that's that's an image that has been projected on us and we accept that. I got to talk. Don't make me act like a nigga. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's like, I'm supposed to do and that. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Because one of the things that um, Sheldon shared with us at, at Symbol was, I never really thought about this. But we want to deal with police officers as if, excuse my language, as if they're human beings, as yes. if they are equals. Just like and the peace, the peace, they're not just like you because they're officers of the court. Right. They represent something higher. You ain't got to respect that police officer that's disrespecting you. What you're respecting and showing respect for is that badge right. that yes. you pay taxes for every time you go and buy some candy. Every, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's authority. And if they, yes. if the people behind the badge are abusing that authority, yes. that's when you do like she says. And slickly grab that number so that you can make sure that you make a report. We're not making enough reports. Mm -hmm. We prefer to argue. Yes. We prefer to argue. And, we, and, and so I think it kind of be That's the accountability. That's a good point. Right. If, you are, not, a good if point. you are not being, you feel like you're not being treated fairly, your job is to go and hold make sure that, they, that that's it. And if you don't do it, then we hold you accountable because mm -hmm. you didn't do what you were supposed yes. to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. By all means. And, uh, and at least, like I said, maintaining. As homeboy says, stand on this square. Represent, represent your family, represent simple right. because we teach right. we teach you yes. how I mean, because no matter no matter what's going on in Simba Land, we expect you to carry yourself in a certain way. Yes. The real training for Simba happens and Simba happens outside right. out Absolutely. here. Right. So we expect you to represent us. Mm -hmm. And by representing us, what that means? That means that you are able to carry yourself with a certain okay. pride and with a certain level so that you get uh, yes. integrity where yes. you could mm -hmm. deal with somebody mm -hmm. yes. that's in a position mm -hmm. of power mm -hmm. over you for the moment. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what I'm saying? So you can maintain who you are mm -hmm. and be able to get your point across and no matter how they treat you, mm -hmm. you have a recourse that you could that you could do. Because like if they come to us be like I was I was abused by the cops, we'll tell us everything that you remember because as a, as a chapters we should be prepared as adults mm -hmm. to help walk them through writing everything down. What happened? And now when we write it down, we send it to the police station. Then after that, we got blogs, we got social we got social networks that we're not using to hold these people that are treating our kids wrong. Um, it was possible because I'm gonna say this about what's going on in the black community. The only reason they're killing our kids is because they can get away with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then There's the nothing accountability happening. comes back right. on us. Right. Because if our kids come to, if we tell them what to do and they do it, and then they come back and tell us what happened, then now it's on us. It's, right. it's our to help. To, it's on us right. to help them. The yes. black pages have, they listed some things every black boy, parent should know about the police. Yes. And that's right here in, here in Chicago, the mm -hmm. Black Pages thing. Yeah, yeah. Do y'all follow that one? Who? Black Pages. You mean Chicago Defenders? The Black oh, Pages it's, it's, being sued. Black uh, Pages. Oh, I don't follow that. They have a heck of a website. The, and they, they, they came out about a month ago with about 10 different things that parents, black, they said black parents should tell their kids. Mm -hmm. Not even the, the uh, Hispanic mothers are mm -hmm. joining this fight. Yeah. But it's about ten things in black and, and, and black pages that mm -hmm. they list that, that we should be doing, like what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. So okay, so yeah, we got about what fifteen minutes five, to five, five minutes five. Five. before we go. <laughs> well, let me ask you this: Y'all so. got a skit, and yeah. want to chat somebody? You know, we got somebody act real quick. How many people we got? Come on, okay. So you know, we got one, two, three, one. What's the scenario, though? Three. But you're going to do one. A disrespectful police officer. We're just doing one. Pulling up his car or walking down the street. It could, it, well, I mean, we, we ain't got no cars, so we might as well just let them be walking. Like right. Be Somebody one. act like a police officer and be very disrespectful. Yeah, you can have two, two, two chairs. Right. Like a car. Right. I mean, we can be in a car, put four chairs. Two mm -hmm. in the front, two in the back, or like three said, in the Bob, back. The, the bottom line in that, I don't be in a lot of all those situations. Right. I don't be.
So who you gonna be? Right. I'm gonna be the police. Yeah. You gonna be the police? I don't wanna be bad police. I wanna be the police. Okay. Let a man, let a guy be a police. Cause he's a guy with you. You gonna be a guy with me? Well, I think if we have another dimension, if you have a female police. Oh, the female ones are the worst. That's the other dimension. She, she, they're nice to you. They're nice to me. Why, why, why stop me and tell me you want my number? You want to take me out of my number? That's why I stopped you. That's why I stopped you. Hey. You want to take me out of my number? They're abusing their power. We need one more phone to the other police. I'm a 17 year old girl. 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 You got the police. I need a 15-year-old. Oh, you want to be a male police? I'm riding the king of somebody. I don't care. I'm just that. I'm mad. My wife made me mad when I left. For curfew? Yeah, and then you can. I'm in a car. I'm walking. Right. Okay. You walking? Okay. Hey, ain't y'all too young to be out? What? Who you talking to? I'm talking to you. No, you ain't. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on, hold on. No, too late. Where y'all coming from? None of your business. Oh, no. oh, she got a mouth on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so are you so talking about we don't do the right way? No, no, no. Come back up. Come back up. I ain't going nowhere with y'all. I don't know what you're doing. Wait, wait, wait. Now you don't do it. Why you touching me? We don't do the right way, and then we're going to do the wrong way, right? This is the wrong way. That's it. I'm going to say the wrong way. Yeah, we're going to do 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 the wrong way. Yeah, we I'm not gonna search me. No, don't man, you're resisting arrest. Handcuffs. So, no don't touch me. Like All right, you're under arrest. I'm calling my mom. Oh, my mom gonna come up here. Oh, okay. She gonna sue this police station. Okay. <laughs> black man, yeah. okay, doing something. Cause we're walking down the street. Black people. Yeah. 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 That's why right. right. we got nothing else to do. That's our job. That's what Let's put these nappy head kids in the car. Right. What nappy head? Nappy head. 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 Nappy <laughs> Don't uh, threaten to file a complaint. Or is it going to fall? And she's talking about suing. Now all, now all I need for, uh, to happen is for Mike to try to run. Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. run from the police. Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, Jamal, are you going to narrate this? That will be right. If you narrate it, we can do it yeah. in front of them it, again. Just, you can't have right. a list it on the where the kids can actually see your list of things. Uh, well, we ain't got time to do all that, Doc. I know. I said I said it too bad. We don't. Okay. I mean, but he could read each one on Mark and say, "All right, yeah, did yeah. they have yeah, just yeah, like you asked us? Which yeah, ones did they violate?" Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Oh, Jerome, yeah. and, and when you first start telling the kids, listen, tell right it's now. not yeah. your fault. Racism is still alive. Yeah, You're working so, on it. So yeah. please, you know, I mean, some kind of way, let them know yeah. that it's not them. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not their fault. Right. Yeah. So when we do it the right way. We okay. still gonna be. We still gonna be ignorant. Well, ignorant. The child, <laughs> we know right, we gonna right, change. We right. Gonna. We look like you've been there before. No. So. <laughs> I'm on suit. I'm okay, on suit. So, Y'all think that that was acting? I have a little acting in me. No. Kendall is raised because I teach him to be humble. No, I practice that in my household. It's just hard to get through to Kalia. <laughs> Kendall is humble. Yeah, yeah. Real humble. I'm talking about he is a nonviolent person. He do not way. like to I'm argue. assuming that uh these are supposed to be the yeah, evaluations yeah, yeah. for yep. the workshop. Uh I guess it it will evaluate itself after after we do the when we do it. So yeah. we after we eat lunch then we do the panel and that's when we present this, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. We present this after the panel or do okay, it before the panel.